Between the Pages, Tatiana Soli, Jane Smiley, Eileen Goose, Josie Brown, and Jocelyn Jackson. That just to get us rolling tonight, I'll read you a little bit of my latest release, Backseat Saints. Yeah, I'm nervous. I can tell I'm nervous when the Southern Garden gets away from me. Um, I thought I'd read a little bit of Backseat Saints to you. Um, if you're not familiar with this novel, if you've never read any of my novels, you can go to hell for that. It's in Leviticus. Messages, perhaps even present. But strange works here as camouflage. I begin to understand how much little old Claire Lolly from Alabama must have changed in order to belong. She's done it, though. It is as if I can feel her heart beating, and it is the same heartbeat that the city has, a thready, strange arrhythmia that shouldn't work as well as it does. My novel, Secret Lives of Husbands and Wives, is a story about a divorce, as seen through the eyes of a neighbor. Dee Dee and Harry Wilder are their town's perfect couple until Dee Dee decides she's walking out on Harry and their two children, Jake, who's 13, and Temple, who's five, game face. We all have one. It takes your smile and sharpens it into a grimace. Rocked by the emotional earthquake, the gentle planes of your face shifts into stone. The happiness once beaming from your eyes is now refracted inward with laser-sharp concentration. I don't know if you heard, but we, we took the wrong ferry. <laughs> the, along the way, we became the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. <laughs> <laughs> but we made it. Here we are. Boy, I was on a roll there. But I lacked one important thing. And it wasn't, I didn't believe that thing was talent. I, 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 had enough teachers give me A's in school and pat me on the head and tell me what a good writer I was. I was sure that I would set the world on fire. No, I lacked a typewriter. <laughs> and I decided, okay, I'm going to borrow, see if my next door neighbor has one. Now, I had never met this man. I had only glimpsed him through the window in my sister Patty's room that looked in his she drawled to carry in. If all men thought with the head on their shoulders, there wouldn't be no call for us gals to get our dandruff over every dumb thing a fella says when he's had too much to drink. <laughs> <laughs> I won't take responsibility for the North. Anyway, uh, my novel is set in Vietnam and it's about a, a beginner photojournalist who wants to go, drop out, drops out of college and goes to the war before it ends because she thinks it's going to end too fast and she ends up spending 10 oh. years of her life there. So um, I'm going to read a short passage um, where she's already been there for about five years and she knows that she needs to leave and um, her assistant Lin, who's a Vietnamese, you know, assistant and a photographer, he asks her before she leaves, you know, what, what did she want to see? And she said the holy grail for all the photojournalists was to actually see the North Vietnamese and to photograph the Ho Chi Minh Trail. It's proving the whole thing had not been a dream. <laughs> oh. What had happened, what Margaret should have remembered, was that her brother Lawrence, who would have been 13 then, had left the house with her one day and taken her to a public hanging. <coughs> No one had stopped him because Lavinia was giving birth to Elizabeth and her father, famous all over town, is Dr. Mayfield. Margaret thought of him as Dr. Mayfield too, he was that imposing, <laughs> was attending the birth. Margaret stared at her. The lady smiled. Margaret thought that she had never seen anything as beautiful as that dress in her life which at the time seemed rather long. This is the 13th novel, and there's a couple of other books. So if it's the 13th novel, then I've had 14 ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and um, one of them didn't work out. Was, you know, every, every once in a while I get a little, uh, people look objecting to the sex scenes, and the best comment I ever got was from a 90-year-old woman who came up to me at a signing and said, if I can't do it, I want to read about it. <laughs> There's, there's probably two answers to that. The first is if you, I mean, coming over on the ferry, it became pretty obvious to me that you guys live in a place of a very specific and particular beauty. No place else looks like it looked when I went over and, you know, all these dark trees coming out of the mist. And Northern Alabama has its own particular and spectacular, specific beauty. And it's the mountains and the greenness of everything. And the earth is so black. 
and it goes in hills and shales and there's granite falls everywhere. And I look at that landscape and on the surface level, I see about a hundred places to hide a body everywhere I look. And <laughs> on a more serious level, the, that soil is so fertile and so blood-soaked in the history of this. Our bookseller tonight, who has been our biggest cheerleader in this event. So, thank you, Suzanne. Cambridge Performing Arts, Between the Pages. Tatiana Soli, Josie Brown, James Smiley, Eileen Gouge, and Jocelyn Jackson.